Welcome to yet another demonstration movie from the Aspire project. In this movie, we'll have a look at call stack checks, a lightweight control flow integrity protection developed by Ghent University. The security requirement we try to protect with our protection is control flow integrity, or more generally, code execution integrity. And we're focusing on a very lightweight form, and so on a minimal requirement that functionality in a binary or library should not be invoked out of context. For example, suppose we have this library all libraries have public interfaces, and normal user applications only interact with the library through the public interface. For example, exported functions can be invoked by a user application. Now, most libraries also have internal functionality that should not be accessed directly by a user. Internally, then, the functionality is invoked through the public interface via a call chain. What we do with our lightweight protection is we want to prevent an attacker from directly invoking this internal functionality. So in each of the functions, the internal ones, we actually add a return address check. We check whether the call side is allowed and comes from within the library itself. And for some functions, like the one in green here, you see that we have multiple call sites. What we do in this case is we just check whether the return address comes from within the address range of the library itself. For other functions, like the ones in yellow here, that have only one valid call site within the library, we insert a more specific check, and we check that the call comes from one single address. Now, if you wonder how we insert those checks, that's very simple. We use the Diablo link time rewriter developed at UGent. So here we are in a virtual machine where we can demonstrate compilation and then later the use of the protected libraries. First, let's look at some source code. You see the application here and the scripts to run our compiler. If we look at the application, you see here a call to a public method in main, and we feed a password, a string to be decrypted, and the length of the string. So the, here we invoke a public function. If we look at the library that implements that function, you see again this public function. In the function, we first perform a password check, and then we invoke the private method. If you look at the private method, you see that it decrypts some code without executing a password check. And you see that we have uh, marked the code in there as needing to be protected with uh, our protection. Now, if we clean the build and then we build the application uh, using a configuration file that we've prepared, you see here the whole tool chain operating. And what you see is that at some point, an unprotected version just a source code that was pre-processed and then compiled is linked into an unprotected library in the directory bco2 and then later we rewrite the code to actually implement the protection at link time and Diablo is responsible for that and we produce the result in the directory bc05 so now I'm actually in a shell on the board I can show that this is a panda board with an ARM processor and if we look at the data here in this directory, I have the app, and then I have the two library versions. Uh, if you look into those directories, you see there's a smaller library that's unprotected and a bigger library that's protected. Now let me run the application. If I preload the unprotected library from this pod and I open the application in GDB, I put a breakpoint on main and I run. So now the application is halted at the entry point of main. But then I try to call the private method directly, eh, only providing the string to be decrypted and the length of that string. Then you see that the decrypted string is printed and this function returns normally. So you see that I've been able to execute this function out of context uh, in a way that it should not be executed. Now, if I try to run the process instead with the protected library, and again, I put a breakpoint on main, and I start the program and halt there. Then if I again try to invoke this function, you see that the program crashes. That's because our reaction mechanism in this case is to cause a crash. So you see that the protection is effective. That's it. This video, along with all the research that led up to it, was sponsored by the European Union 7 Framework Programme.